Speaking in Latin, his mind made up. This was Pope Benedict breaking his shock news to those closest to him. Explorata, ad condizionem certam perveni, viris mias, in gravescente etate, non iam aptas esse ad monus petrinum eque administrandum. Bene concesum hoc monus secundum suem essentiam spiritualem non solum accendo et loquendo exequitibere, sed non minus paziendo et orando. The ailing pontiff's inner circle listened with incredulity as he told them of his decision. 24 hours earlier, Benedict had been in St. Peter's Square, his historic decision known only to close family and advisors. The 85-year-old pontiff has looked increasingly frail in recent months, with some reports suggesting his doctors have advised him to cut back on long-haul travel. He's often used a mobile platform to move around St. Peter's Basilica during church services as a result of his increasing fragility. A papal resignation is unprecedented in living memory. The last pontiff to quit was Gregory XII in 1415, so much so that Vatican officials had to leaf through the rules for clarity. This is a formal decision from a legal point of view. We can take it directly from canon law. Canon 332, paragraph 2, one can read in the case when the Pope decides to resign from his office in order to make sure it's valid. The resignation has to be done freely and it must be expressed of his own free will. Those close to the Pope praised his bravery and determination in reaching this decision. I was very surprised, but I understand it because of the situation. He alone can decide how physically and mentally strong he is, just like only he alone can evaluate the post he held. Based on this evaluation, he took a responsible decision, which I respect. Elsewhere, the overwhelming reaction was one of shock. I recognize that this is a decision which is full of the characteristics of Pope Benedict. There is in it great courage, there is in it great integrity and real humility. The past 15 months have seen Benedict embark on three major foreign visits. In November 2011, he went to Benin. Then in March of last year, he visited Mexico before heading on to Cuba and a meeting with Fidel Castro. And in September, what proved to be his last papal tour, a trip to Lebanon. On each occasion, thousands of people turned out to welcome him. In almost eight years as pontiff, Benedict provided unification and leadership. His predecessor, John Paul II, went down in history as one of the great popes. Benedict now makes history, but for very different reasons. End of Brady, Sky News.